Welcome to Precon Power Ups for the Nitpicking Nerds. This time we got the green red precon upgrades unleashed, upgraded for just $50. Upgrades. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. We're bringing you daily magic content, which means magic content on everyone's birthday. So happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. And if you want to support the channel, the best way, period, to do that is to just give us money through Patreon.com, and then we give you something in return. Yes, we can continue to produce this awesome content with your help. If you would like to buy some magic cards, you can use TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. You go there, and as long as you started with the Nitpicking Nerds link in the description, all purchases will support the nerds. Same is true for DragonShield.com, which is also in the description, right below or above, directly adjacent to the TCG Player link. You can buy the sleeves or the playmats that you want and still support the nerds at the exact same time. They are the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. So, Precon Power Up, we're taking the Precon, in this case, the Green Red Upgrades Unleashed Modified deck, and we're going to upgrade it for just $50.00 giving you fully functional deck you can take to the commander tables, you can win games reliably with it. We kind of just fix all the issues with the precon, and for less than 100 total, when you buy the precon and upgrade it, you're good to go. Yeah, so you can literally buy this and all the upgrades on TCG Player using the link in the description below. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. And you can do all that in uh, less than $100. You're going to spend less than $100, maybe a little more with shipping, but still. Right, and usually the precons, they give you good value for reprints. Usually it's fine for all the cards combined. Plus, this is affordable cards that you're not wasting any money on because they're all worth it. And then you just have a deck that's great. Yeah, and before we upgrade anything, obviously we're getting into this video, we have to read the commander because if we don't know what the commander does, we don't know what the deck does. The commander is Toshiro the Shattered Blade. Two green red for a legendary creature, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever an aura or equipment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 red spirit with menace. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one, plus one counter on each modified creature you control. The deck's game plan is to have a ton of modified creatures so that Tashiro's abilities always trigger on the end step. We're also, obviously, going to be getting plenty of tutus whenever we cast our auras and equipments. And how are we going to win? We're going to overwhelm opponents with a massive board state of modified plus one, plus one counter creatures, or we're going to go tall by suiting up some giant creature and then just dealing lethal damage to one player in one swing. First, though, we gotta start cutting the cards that just do not fit the game plan at all. They're made for other decks. They're designed for uh, other reasons. We gotta get them out of here. Let's start with Collision of Realms. It's a really weird board wipe that kind of gives everybody a creature after, but it's seven mana. We're not interested in it. We can't take advantage of that at all. Shifting Shadow is like, wants to play off the top of our deck and kind of generate giant creatures or make the same creatures attack and do stuff over and over. And it's just, we can't, we can't do it. I mean, I get that it's an aura. It modifies a creature, but everything can do that. There's a million ways to do that. Next cut is Bone Horde. This is just a living weapon that doesn't quite fit our deck. I get it. It's cute. Living weapons are cute with this deck as they come with a creature that's automatically modified. Not quite good enough here. Spearbreaker Behemoth. I am not sure what this is. We're not really a deck that's planning on just all of our creatures being five power or greater. That's not the theme of the deck, so we're out of here. I just don't even think this card is like remotely good. It is so expensive for not and you're paying all the mana for the stats on this thing, and I don't want to. Kaima, the Fractured Calm, wants to us to enchant our opponent's creatures, and we're not going to do that. Very rarely are we going to do that. Not even close to enough to make this worth keeping in the deck. That's its own deck. It literally is its own unique style of deck that you have to really build around, and it's just not... You can't put... This, this card is never going to fit in a 99. I would be... They would have to build another commander in this same, like space, which they probably won't, so I would just assume never put this in the 99. Yeah, Concord with the Kami, it's a it's a cool little enchantment because it gives you three different options, except we really want to draw a card, and we're not dedicated auras. If we were, we would have a bunch of enchantresses in this deck, and then if we did, we wouldn't play Concord with the Kami because it's a slow Phyrexian Arena way, or not Phyrexian Arena, but it's a slow once per turn way to draw a card, but we could just use enchantresses if we're playing all the enchantments and auras, so this is like, I think this card is like weirdly unusable and has like no homes that I can think of. Yeah, it's just, it's underpowered. You really have to be, you have to be built around it. And even if though we are built around it, we still cut it. So think about that. You definitely need the card back. Yeah, an Uncrutchable Fury cares about the power of your creature. It has the cards in the opponent's three, hand when they attack. Yeah, and it has Rancor text. That's the one redeeming factor, but it's like not what our deck is doing. This is like its own card that, and we're just not interested. Shout outs to the most frustrating thing in history. When you add Unquenchable Fury to your deck, you don't get this Unquenchable Fury. 
you get another magic card with the same exact name. Can you tell me what that magic card does, Jerry's? There's two unquenchable, unquenchable furies. Uh, unquenchable fury? You're talking about the uh, Minotaur card? But of course, yes. The Minotaurs gain menace until end of turn from the Theros like fake deck thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not a real card. Knoxville doesn't know yet that this is the real one. Yeah, so stupid. Uh, so the next, we are going to be adding cards that do fit our game plan. The first one we added, Nissa, Voices Zendikar. Perfect for the deck. It is a three mana Gavany Township effect. That's all we need out of it. And it Great. does and it does more. It modifies every single one of our creatures on the field. It takes for three mana, all of our creatures become modified, and that's exactly what we want out of a card. With our commander, we're paying three mana for two plus one plus one counters across just everything. This is just an easy way to A, generate a board state early, and then B, modify all your creatures no matter what, no questions asked. I love this card. You know, it's almost like I think they could have actually included this card in the precon. It was originally supposed to be in the precon. We cut Moss. Uh, There's a two Moss v Fire Valleys in the deck because someone had a really bad series of months when they should have been proofreading this deck and they just forgot probably 50, 100 times when they were supposed to go over it. So we got two Moss Fires and no Nissa. So we're adding Nissa. Yeah, Nissa is the right card. Uh, next, we have Vivian, Monster's Advocate. She pluses. To put a creature in the play that has a counter, so it's always she's always making modified creatures, and she provides card advantage as she lets you place creatures off the top. Add in the fact that she minuses and you can get a tutor, I'm in. This card's good. Yeah, if you find that you really need a certain creature, great. Minus two Vivian to death, or just keep her down to one. It doesn't really matter because her plus is the her plus and static are the value card value parts. Yes. Uh, also, my one of my favorite cards to add to this deck, the deck I just have put together, Halana Elena Partners. Absolutely great card. I mean, we want to put counters on everything, including Helena Elena, and she's just going to put more counters on. She's going to give haste. Great card. This might be one of the best cards in the deck. It's just perfect. They just happen to want the exact same things always. We yeah. want big power creatures sometimes. We want to modify things. We want to give them haste. Great. Does everything. Yes. Uh, Thundering Raju. This is a card from the set uh, that's obviously intended for you to buy it for the deck. It attacks, it puts a counter on things, and then it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of modified creatures you control. This card's just strong. Yeah. If you can go, if you can build a five, six creature board, which is totally a reasonable thing to do, and then you can just get in, now you're gonna deal, so you had, let's just say you had five, 15 total damage out just for playing this four drop. It has haste, good card. Yeah, this is a sweet one. I'm, I'm excited that there's a red plus one plus one counter. Like just, they don't have that stuff going on. This one is sick. When I saw this one, I got really happy. Tago Goblin Weaponsmith landfalls to make stupid disposable rock tokens, but they're equipments. So for just one mana, you can modify a creature you control and just have a rock left over. I mean, rocks are actually not bad. It's not bad to equip like three rocks and just pass you kind of have a surprising amount of control over the board. Yeah, rocks are pretty good. I mean, they're free. I mean, the, the thing that makes the rocks so good, because they're obviously bad. Like, realistically, a rock is a bad card. Yeah, three mana sorcery that makes three rocks is just like, I don't know, that's yeah. probably bad. Yeah, exactly. Batago is a creature that every land, it turns into a new permanent that does something, and that something is modification for this deck. You know what? I'm taking it back. I don't know if three mana sorcery make three rocks would be bad. Let's just say three mana sorcery that makes one rock is terrible. Yes. Uh, next is Verterus Gear Hulk. I love, this is my favorite Gear Hulk by far. Yeah, it's a fun one. I played a lot of this in standard. It's a 4 4 trample, enters the battlefield. You can put four counters distributed however you want, wherever you want, which means that if we have four creatures without counters, we now have four modified creatures with counters. Oh, yeah. All these cards work so well together. You got Thundering Raiju, and then, like, all right, Nissa and Verterus Gear Hulk spread all the counters out, deal a bunch of damage. Or you have Han and Lena. It's like, all right, Verterus Gear Hulk. Put all the counters on Helena and Lena, dish them out somewhere else, maybe the Gearhulk, smash for a bunch. If you tell me you're in a green deck and you care about auras, the first card I'm putting in every time is Rancor. The card is so dang good. Plus two, plus two, trample. Plus two, plus oh. Epic fail. Oh, it is an epic fail. Plus two, plus oh, trample. I know what the card does. And when it goes from the battlefield to the graveyard, it goes back to your hand. Card is honestly very, very strong. That text, they're putting it on other things. Because that's of course Bofir actually hears it. What makes Rancor so good is that you get evasion, a form of something, and it's one mana. So because you're going to be reusing this something when you add this to three mana, it falls way down in the ranks of the ability. Yeah, this is just it never disappoints. You have to be the beatdown though. As long as you're the beatdown trying to send some big creature or a series of creatures in. You're going to be okay, especially if you can get a cantrip or a spirit off of this every time. It's like, great. This card's amazing. Yes. So now that we've cut cards that don't fit the game plan, we've had some cards that do fit our game plan, 
we have to upgrade existing cards. These are cards that, well, they went along with the game plan, but they weren't quite where we wanted to be. It's just a little off. So the first little category is counters. Uh, these are cards that you deal mostly deal with plus one, plus one counters, but they can deal with any kind of counters. Taurine Mauler is the very first cut. This is a bad Forgotten Ancient. Yeah, uh, it's a bad Mana Gorger Hydra. I think if your counters are staying on those cards, I don't play them. I don't think they're very good at all. Yeah, I, exactly. I think you should. I think there's yeah, there's Mana Gorger Hydra, there's Torin Mauler, and there's Forgotten Ancient. Only play Forgotten Ancient because the ability to move those counters makes it that much better. Ox of Agonis, this is like nothing to do with the deck. It just happens to escape with a counter. This card is literally so far removed from anything related to this deck. When, when can we afford to play this? Well, for five, and when are we ever playing it for two off of the escape? I don't know what this card is doing in here. Genesis Hydra is just a really bad rate. You can do so much better, and it's kind of just a vanilla body. Goblin Raise Runners, cute. It says plus one, plus one counters. We're not interested in trying to buff this thing to deal some damage. We got things like Thundering Raiju, which like just deal it without us having to pay too much of a cost. Yeah. Ascended Acolyte. Oh, look, it's another one of these Mana Gorger Hydras. That just doesn't, this one doesn't even have evasion, and it just sits there, and I'm not interested. Well, this really. one's not a Mana Gorger Hydra. This one... The reason I really hate this card is it has zero evasion, like you said, and you have to have a board, and then this presents a, it, an already good board. Then on top of the board, it adds another threat. So it's like, if your board needed to be wiped before, now it needs to be wiped twice as bad. It's like, that's not what we want to be doing. We want to be turning that into a win. Shut the door. Play an overrun. Don't, exactly. Don't just like, here's my 2020 vanilla. I, like It's not a literal mana gorger, but it's in like the... Giant vanilla, what am I doing with this category? Yeah, Silk Guard, uh, we can put counters on creatures and give them Hexproof. No, thank you, only Hexproof. If, I, it's very rarely do you need to give more than one creature Hexproof with one spell. That is so true. How often, how many spells? There's probably like six, seven, maybe eight playable spells in yeah. all of Commander. That, Fire Covenant's the one coming to my head. That destroyed that's about multiple it. things. It's just yeah. not very many cards. Yeah, we also have Ulash to the Hate Seed. I always get this card confused with the other Hydra that's green and red and does plus one plus one counters, but that one's from Plane Chase. That's not in the deck. But Ulash, I think, is terrible. You gotta have a it's another one. You gotta have a giant board. And then it's like, whoa, I got six creatures out. They're probably big. Here's a six six, and I can remove a counter and make a sapling. It's like, no, thanks. We'll go to these cards that we added though. Yeah. So what we added was Triskelion for starters. Uh if we had room for if we had the cash to put in a walking ballista, we would. It's but better. Instead, we put in his little buddy. We're not comboing with him, but just get him. he'll do a good impression of Walking Ballista. Yeah, this is one of your go-to counter dumps if you've got the Forgotten Ancient out or you've got uh, Halan and Elena going. This is where you're just going to stick everything because it's just going to dominate the board. It doesn't matter if you get wiped. It's always going to do something, and it's really a nightmare to play against. Yeah. We also added Evolution Sage. We're trying to put counters on as many creatures as possible, and that's exactly how prolifer proliferating becomes insanely strong. If you have seven creatures with seven counters and you play one land with an evolution stage, you get seven more counters. For zero mana. Sometimes it feels like negative one because you know you have an extra mana. I think Evolution Sage is underrated for how good I think it is because I think it's better than doubling season. And so if anyone wants to come at me, I don't I don't know. Or you can or you can. I like these next two. It's Spike Shot Elder and Spike Shot Goblin. They both deal damage equal to their power to stuff. Goblin is or, well, Spike Shot Goblin is a tap and then Elder is one red red, just do it. So if he's a, I think even if you get him up to a three three, uh, with which is pretty trivial, now you've got Lightning Bolt on a stick for three, that can control some things. And then there's obviously, once you get going and you want to dump your counters on him, the board state's open, you're ready to do it, you're just gonna win. Yeah, these cards are totally strong. If you if you have the ability to really pump these up, I mean, they're, they fit perfectly in like my deck, Halana Lena, and this mm -hmm. is a very, very similar deck where it's just like, okay, I'll put 10 counters in this. Like, I would you not because I don't want you to. And now here we go. Here's the Mana Gorger Hydra that is the best of the best. What we actually want, Thundering Mightmare. It Mana Gorger Hydra's itself, but the actual thing I care about, it gives it to one of my creatures that I want to have a bunch of plus one, plus one counters. That does something, like a Triskelion or a Spike Shot Elder. Now I can pump up this relevant creature and just for bonus, I get this Thundering Mightmare, and if, if they want to answer the Thundering Mightmare, you get to keep the thing you just put a bunch of counters on, or if they answer the thing you put counters on, you get to keep the Thundering Mightmare and start over with something else. Yeah, it, let, it gives the ability to both the creatures, making it so, so much better. Torian Muller, get out of here. Thundering Mightmare is your worst enemy, because I don't know how you make a deck with this in existence. He's out of a job.
All right, that was a plus one plus one counter theme, which is obviously the main way we're going to modify creatures, but we're also supporting with auras and equipment. This is kind of the other modification area. We cut Walking Skyscraper. There was already the 11 mana 10-10 that basically costs one mana that Gavity Township's our team. We don't need a second weird beater that kind of doesn't do as much, so we're cutting that. Komainu Battle Armor wants us to goad their creatures, and we don't want to do that. Go get it in the Kaima deck. Yeah, uh, Smoke... Spirits aid also a Kaima card. I don't know. Again, yeah, this card doesn't. This card is bad. It's just bad. It doesn't really fit much of anywhere, and it definitely doesn't fit in our deck. I don't know. It's such a weird design. Maybe there's some niche applications, but I don't think I want to jump through the hoop of wait till this is good. You know, you're just gonna be dead in your hand probably a ton of the time. It's hard to find good equipment to play. And Mage Slayer is not even close to on my radar. No. Of even if on a budget, this card sucks. It is a very bad equipment. I like Snake Umbra in general, but here what I really want is more ways to deal damage, to preferably to all opponents at one time. Like, yeah, it's good on Spike Shot Elder or, or the Goblin, but we just don't need this particular thing. I, th I think it's just easier to find other ways to get cards. Yeah, one of my big problems with something like Snake Umbra is that it's a very specific kind of protection. It only protects from destruction because if you have to sacrifice it or anything else... The Umbra doesn't do anything, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of the uh, Totem Armor effect. I don't put too much weight behind Totem Armor. I care about the effect on the enchantment. I basically don't even factor in at all and kind of count it as gravy because all of the best removal just completely gets around it. Like, you're going to see it all the time. So what kind of modification stuff did we add? Well, first one we added, Aspect of the Mongoose. This has that Rancor text that we talked about earlier where if it goes from the battlefield to the graveyard, we get it back to our hand. I like this card is... A card that doesn't see a lot of play. And I was thinking about it literally in the shower. I was having a shower thought about it. Why doesn't this see much play? Well, the reason is the decks you want to play it in are Voltron decks, Aura decks, and decks where your creature having Shroud isn't that great. But in a deck that wants to go wide with this sort of thing, Aspect of the Mongoose is absolutely perfect. I mean, we're really not pumping Chishiro. Or we're really not pumping uh, some of these other creatures. So if it's you've got some guy that's just an enabler, just like like Thundering Nightmare, you know, just stick this on there, mm -hmm. protect your thing, then it's going to fuel the rest of your game plan, and those guys are going to go ham. Exactly. It's super. This is like a perfect card for this deck. Literally fits into this deck perfectly. Wow. Well said. Perfectly. I think these next two are pretty interesting. They're Cherry's Originals. Rune of Speed and Rune of Might. They go on equipments that we have, and we'll get to in a second, to draw a card. They always cantrip, or they can just go on creatures. So they always modify if you need them to, they can enchant anything. So they always cycle. You're never going to have them be like, oh, I can't cast it. You can always cast it. You can enchant a land with this. And then on certain equipment, it's going to be pretty nuts. Yeah, I really am a big fan of these. If you're playing a deck that is doing both. Lower power for sure. Uh, I think even when, you, if you're doing any sort of deck, like up to like a seven power, that's doing equipments and auras. Now that's a specific, that's a specific, very specific deck. These go in immediately. I think these are very, very good in that niche archetype. All right, we also have I mean this is going to close this is going to close some doors on games for sure. Ember Cleave, you are you know you saw it coming in that standard format with Bone Crusher Giant attacking you. But you're not going to see it coming when I'm attacking with six saplings or a giant thundering nightmare and just go, "All right, uh you know that Matthew just did double it. You're dead." Yeah, it's nice to have Ember Cleave be a budget card cuz I don't feel like it's really a high power EDH card, but having it in budget decks is I think it definitely fits there. And your combat meta, this is like Thumbs up. Get this in your deck. Yeah, we're going big, and I think Everclaves is sick. Uh, Lightning Greaves, That's uh, we have been doing real good on budgets for these $50 decks. People have been saying, you know, Magic is more expensive and budget decks are harder to build. We've been building better budget decks lately, so I don't really know what people are talking about. We've been able to really... There's In the past, like, year, two years, there was a spike at the beginning of COVID uh -huh. for Magic prices. It seems like Magic prices and reprints have been great over the, over the pandemic. So we've gotten a lot of good, good reprints and good pricing. Lightning Greaves is now like a card we can, just like Embercleave that yeah. went down, Lightning Greaves, we can just fit in a deck now. And it's, it's like three, four bucks. It's literally perfect for this deck. I mentioned it. I mentioned this when we did Ranking Every Commander and Tishiro came up. I literally said, I'm like, Lightning Greaves is perfect because you can move it to whatever you want to get the new counter. I, perfect card for the deck. And do the new modification. Perfect. I'm going to say, keep, apparently perfect is my word for this video. I guess you're just never going to, people are probably never going to get sick of it. Well, uh, what I really like about uh, this deck is really focus and synergistic. Like, I actually don't use the word perfect for a deck that often, and this deck just happens to fit together so well. Perfectly. Perfectly, nice. some might say. All right, we hated on this card so much, and we found a spot for it. I don't know if we gave it enough, but Belt of Giant Strength. 
still get, enough. Get off the get off the bench in, from the bulk box, baby, because we actually do want. I guess it's a D minus. Yeah, you know, like our creatures are going to be ginormous, so it, it's going to equip for very little mana, and then it's going to give plus eight, plus eight, because we're just putting counters on. We're not like we're not playing creatures with giant base power toughnesses for the most part. So this one's going to definitely mess people up. It, it's really goofy. You can have surprise turns. You're like, all right, two mana, play it, equip for free. Tag you for a thousand. Yeah, it's a really silly card, and yeah, like I said, we give it an F. I'll get we'll bump. I guess now Chishiro is bumped it up to a D minus. Can you, <laughs> like, why is the belt so small? It it is. It makes your creature taller than trees, taller than the skyscraper, but it's just like a belt. It's like a WrestleMania tape. WWE belt. I don't know. I can't I can't help you with that. We also added Karamicha's Blessing. This turns any creature into a mana dork, but what it really does is it cantrips, so you make the thing modified, cantrip, and keep going. Perfect on a spirit. You're like, all right, this spirit's just going to be my mana spirit. You're, you're a special spirit. And then you get another spirit, like, you're going to be my attack spirit. I have become... I, this is a card that when I saw it perform when we were doing some pre-com battles... Yeah, at the lower powers. Yeah, that I was really impressed with. Verdant Embrace. It turns your creature into... Uh, what is that? Verdant thing? Force. Verdant Force. Force. Well, I, I absolutely think this card is actually just pretty good because one of the main issues for your Auras deck sometimes can be going wide. Slap this on. Just now it's going wide. Now we play Nissa next turn. Put counters on all of them. This deck is just going to be, what is it, flowing. If you say perfect, I'm going to kill you. It, no, I wasn't thinking perfect. Uh, it's flowing. Perfect flow. Great. Fluid? I, I don't know. Uh, there's also, like, Grumgullies in the deck already. Yeah. And Grumgully, when you're just churning out stuff like this, you don't have to worry about anything. They're all modified all the time. Every deck needs it. We got ramp removal and card draw. So we're the cutting, basics. We're cutting Hunter's Insight. Yeah, we want to deal combat damage. Yeah, we want big creatures. But this thing just isn't on enough of the time, just like the rest of our cards always are castable and they always work. Like Runa Speed. It's like, well, I'll always play it, even if I even if it's not the best. Like Hunter's Insight, if you're not attacking and dealing damage, it is a blank map. It has no tax at all. My issue with this card isn't necessarily that. It's this, this is a three mana, put yourself in a two for one situation mm -hmm. all the time. But also, we just have all these other cards that draw equal to power. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place. There's a ton of good ones. If you want to draw equal to power, don't also, drawing equal to power is already a risk that is taken. If do not, do not add in the extra step of having it to need to be damaged now. This deck's got Shamanic Revelation for when we go wide, and it's got Rich Card's Expertise already included in the precon that we didn't cut for going tall, and they're both going to just, like, outperform this to the moon. Decimate. Man, I haven't seen Decimate played in a while, but our friend Tim just reminded us how bad it is the past couple times he's played it because he's like, there's only one enchantment to play? It's mine? Okay. The last I really need that creature dead. I'll destroy it. Yeah, the last two times we saw him play the card, it was play an enchantment so I can destroy my own enchantment so my Decimate isn't a dead card, and then oh, next time... Couldn't cast it, right? He couldn't cast it. There was no enchantments in play. The card is... It really... I know... When it's good, it's great. But when it's bad, it's dead. Which is most which, important. Yeah, which is most important. If my four mana removal spell Sorcery. can be dead, I'm not in for yeah, it. Yeah, what the heck. Uh, Cidic Slime, too expensive. We're never playing this, basically. It's not like it's a bad card, but it's a card we're always going to cut. I don't value the 2-2 two -two Death Touch body. I just value destroying something, which is what I need to do. Soul's Majesty, there's your two-for-one risk. It's a lot of mana, and we have Rich Card's Expertise, which is so much better. I just rather not put myself in that situation. Yeah, don't play when this spell is targeting. There are a lot of good versions of this card. There's Garrick. There's Garrick's uh, Return of the Wild speaker card. There's Rich Card's Expertise. There's if, there's other ones, and they don't target when you when there's a seven seven on the battlefield and a three three. Okay, you're you're you are taking some risk when you minus Garrick. But if they kill the seven seven, you still draw three. Mm -hmm. If you target the seven seven and they remove it, you get nothing. Don't play, the, this is just, this card is just too, it puts you in too many positions for a blowout when there's so many better versions. Yeah, too risky. Kosei, Penitent Warlord, we kind of have all the ingredients here, but I'm just not going to risk it. I, I don't get nearly as much benefit from, from it in my 99 as in my command zone. So it's a great card elsewhere. Whiff Tongue Hydra, okay, we're not that scared of flyers. Let's let's just get this out of here. Yeah, Whiff Tongue Hydra's cool, but not good. Yeah, it's a, it's a commander cube card. Yeah, Fertilid, um, this card is fine, and I think it's a lower power card. Yeah, it's slow. We're on the upgrade. We're just we're upgrading now, and this card can just get out of this deck at this point. If this deck was a $50 deck, if you just said make a $50 Chishiro deck, maybe Fertilid would be in. But once we're up to, you know, this, I think this total deck costs like $88 together. Nah. -uh. Yeah, and on paper, Tawashi Guide Bot looks fine. Mm -hmm. But it's a really, really bad. It's a four mana. Mm -hmm. Has to tap. 
It's a creature, so it's actually susceptible. Phyrexian Arena. Not in for this at all, just way too slow. Yeah, there's another similar card from Modern Horizons 2 that we did not add. I think we can just do a little bit better. We're adding some bangers, though. Incubation Druid, we got a ton of ways to modify it, specifically with counters. And once we do, it's just Gilded Lotus. Yeah, well, I, yeah, this card's really good. I've been a big fan of this. If you're able to reliably put a counter on it without activating its ability, I would consider this for your deck, and it goes right here. Same with Gyre Sage. As soon as you add one counter, I'm in. Yeah, I am 100. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it only makes one mana, but it's like, great. Okay, it's only going to get better. Yeah, exactly. Inspiring Call. This is one of my favorite ways to draw in counters decks. It literally uh, draws for all your creatures with them and makes them indestructible. It's this weird versatile protection spell and draw spell. Big fan. Sit down, Silk Guard. We don't we don't need you. This card is so much better than Silk Guard. And Armorcraft Judge just is a creature that ETVs and draws for each one of your creatures with counters on it. I love when this thing enters with a counter because you just feel like a genius. Like, mm, one more card for me. Yeah, I, Armorcraft Judge is, a, is also just another good card. We're going to have so many counters across our board that this is going to draw all the time. We also added Kenris Transformation, some removal, but it's also an aura. If we, for some reason, want to put it on a creature, we could. I mean, throw it on one of your spirits. It's a cantrip, and you'll get a modified creature out of it. Like, that's not the end of the world. And then the best thing you can do with this card, for like five cents, is just shut somebody's commander down and maybe impact how much fun they're having, but it's a sick card. Yeah, I think this card is not fun. It's so freaking good. Viridian Joiner taps for mana equal to its power, so it's just like Gyrus Age and Incubation Druid. We're going to spam counters on it, Halana Elena, whatever we want to do, Verter, Skill Hulk, and then it's just going to produce an absurd amount of mana. I love this card because it looks terrible, it, but then they're going to get smacked by it. It's one of those cards that, it, on paper, it's terrible in 99% of decks. It's like a D-, minus, but when you find the deck for it, it's good there. Well, it's funny because I could even look at, like, they're like, oh, Marwin the Nurturer. Oh, okay, we got to kill that. That's going to get big. And it's like, Viridian Joiner, like, meh. Whatever. Same card. It might get big. <laughs> same same card. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even assume. Yeah. Goblin and Archomancer is like Joe's favorite card, so I'll let him talk about it. I mean, Goblin and Archomancer makes all your green and red spells cost less. Now, BZ pointed out to me that there's a cycle of these familiars that they're like they're within the shards. They are the middle color of the shard, and they reduce the colors of the opposite, the other two colors in the shard. But you correctly pointed out, it's like, well, that doesn't reduce every colored spell in my deck, like Ar an Archomancer does in green red, and it's like. Those are only playable in shard decks, like exactly. Exactly. I think this card is actually amazing. If you're playing an exactly green red deck, mm -hmm. it, you have to be a gruel deck. This card goes in, and I, I think it's just like, it's one of those, like, I'm going to, after seeing how it performed in a deck that is in no way intended to take advantage of it, I will now forever put this in my gruel deck. It seems pretty good, so I, I will try it the next chance I get. I actually missed my opportunity, but the next time I get a chance, <laughs> I will try it. Nature's Claim. Oh, my God. Acidic Slime looks so bad next to Nature's Claim. One mana instant. Hold it up forever. It's so easy and trivial to hold this up. Takes out the best thing. The four life is is, is nothing, and I'm not interested in Death Touch Body. So yes. that's kind of like the one-for-one -one swap. Yeah. Talk about a one-for-one -one slap. We talked about taking out that seven mana Seven thing. mana board wipe. How about Blasphemous Act? It's a one mana board wipe. It's literally the best thing. And this deck has the potential to go big enough mm -hmm. that our creatures will have 14 toughness and survive this board wipe. Which is absolutely hilarious. It is 100% possible. I've seen it happen with better decks, and it'll absolutely happen with this deck. That is the worst feeling for your opponent. It's like, uh, 13? Okay, everything's dead. Mm -mm. I've, You're taking 20. Yeah, I've had my Helana Elena deck be in that position where Helana Elena is huge and it's pumping whatever else I wanted to. Okay, I'll wipe everything except for my commander and my other big creature. When Blasphemous Act is one sided, you know you're in trouble. Yeah, that card. And you know you're in trouble because <laughs> yeah. everything's cleared and they have at least 14 14 that can attack you. So you know we got to improve the lands with every single one of these pre cons. Oh my god, much like the buckle up pre con from yesterday's video. We got to cut basics. So first thing we did, get out of here, five forests. Get out of here, five mountains. That's way too many. Opal Palace stinks, so that's also out of here. And, you know, usually I would be okay with keeping Moss Fire Valley in these pre-cons, yeah. but not when there's two and it literally makes the deck illegal. <laughs> it, it turns your entire deck into something that is technically unplayable. As for ads, we got some bangers. Two MDFCs, Kazul's Fury and Vastwood Fortification. Vastwood Fortification, we don't need lands. It's an emergency modification or an extra damage with Triskelion or an extra couple damage with the, the Spike Shot Elder. Just a bunch of different things on this card when it's also a land. Vastwood Fortification? You mean fast? Vastwood modification. I do. I do. And Kazul's Fury is a fling. We're making giant creatures. We don't need this. It's not like it's a fling that's dead in our hand. It's, oh, I don't have a creature bigger than 3-3. Three, three. Land for turn. All right. couple of dual lands for the deck. Shelter Thicket. It's got types for potentially, you know, searching onto the battlefield. Comes in tap, but it can cycle. We also had a Rootbound Crag. Going to come in on tap as long as we have a mountain or Premium. a forest. There's like... Even after the cuts, there's still like eight of each. Yeah. So the, I mean, Rootbound Crag, I'm excited to add because we never get to add 
like we had a Glacial Fortress in the last one. I'm surprised we had this much budget. Moss Warp Bridge is an amazing card draw in green. It's trivial to get the 10 uh, power total, especially in this deck. We're not even going to have to try to do it. We play like two equipments and we're already there. So it just gives you a draw for free and you cast it for free. Yeah, something I want to mention just because we're here on Moss War Bridge. Uh, it has Hideaway, but now it has Hideaway 4 officially, meaning that we're going to be seeing Hideaway again soon. That's what I thought. I, the first thing I said was Streets of New Capenna is going to have Hideaway, and then I heard the Pleasant Kenobi already said that. But it makes a lot of sense for it to have Hideaway. That's what I said. They're gangsters, they're mobsters, they're bootleg and stuff, they're hiding stuff. It makes a lot of sense. That's pretty cool. Ma, uh, Nesting Grounds is the next land. You can move counters around. It's not the most high-impact land, but it's a land. We don't need the colors. We've balanced the colorless lands. We barely have any of them. And this one is a nice way to just get some extra, accruing extra value every turn, moving things around a tiny bit, and it'll add up over time. Yeah, I'm a really big fan of this card. It's just, it does a little bit, but it does that little bit so well. If you, in the uh, more upgraded version of this deck that can avoid the hardened scales and can afford the... Uh, the branching evolutions, all those cards, when you start adding a little more to this deck, this card gets extra good because now it's not just moving a counter from one creature to another. It's moving a counter and doubling it as it gets to the over. It's really cool. Yeah, you can even do weird stuff with Vivian. It's like, all right, put a Vigilance counter on my beast. Move it over for a profitable attack on a weird board state. Rogue's Passage, make your biggest thing unblockable. That just skips the whole combat nonsense. It's like, all right, turn this sideways. Basically, just tap the creature and deal damage to the opponent. Yeah, Ro Rogue's Passage is a very strong card. I mean, it, this is a great... One of those lands that I just... Love his budget. I love that staying budget. Keep it's not like, broken by any means. I'm gonna put it in. I put it in so many different decks. Mirrored landscape. A way to ramp in our land slot. Solid. Kessig Wolf Run and Scarg the Rage Pit. They're kind of similar. They're both ways for us to give our creatures trample. We got got to add Kessig Wolf Run to this deck. That's like a four dollar card. It's so good with some with some of our creatures now. If we have Kessig Wolf or not, we don't have to worry about Trample at all. We Every have, time we have a big creature, it can have Trample. We have the 10-10 um, that puts a counter on each one of our guys. That card doesn't have Trample. You give it Trample? Uh -oh. Holy crap. I mean, it just turns that card from like, okay, it's a nice pump, gives all my creatures, it modifies all my creatures, to a threat, to a now tangible threat that can no longer be chump locked. That's what I'm in. That's what I'm interested in. So let's wrap things up here. We got the budget. We knew it was $50. We spent $48.92 Damn, Damn, we're good, good, which is actually less than we usually spend, but I felt like we got everything we needed to get out, and the extra dollar is for you to keep. BZ is a is a squeeze every penny out of it. Oh, yeah, I would for be, sure. I, I would always aim for me to sp I would spend at least $45, but I'd feel happy if I spent the $45. I don't have to squeeze the pennies up, but BZ's a, BZ's a penny squeezer. For you, I do it for you. A penny squeezer. That's a that's what you are. Yeah. <laughs> the average mana value of the original deck was 3.71. I know what you're thinking. Nerds, can you stop raising these mana values? You keep raising them. New average mana value, 3.18. Boom. We're good. Yeah, that's unheard of. So get enjoy your spells being they just half a it. mana cheaper every time you play a spell. How unheard of can it be if they just heard it? Unheard of. Prior to at, hitherto unheard of. That's what we're, <laughs> looking, what we're looking for. Total changes. 39. I think 12 of them were lands. So 27 regular changes. Yeah. But is that the video? Yes, that is our video. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons. Love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Thank you guys for all of the support. You make this channel keep going and flowing and being awesome. Uh, is it weird to say I love you? I, we, I, I, I don't want to make them uncomfortable, but but I say it every single video. Yeah, I, I guess I guess so. But I just love you, and you're the best. You're the best people in the world, and your support means the world. I wake up every day, you know. I was like, what? I, I wake up every day. <laughs> Thank God. I'm happy to live and. With the best position I've ever been in because of you guys. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, wow, that sounds tacky. I wake up every day. I wake up I wake up every evening with if a smile you, on my face. If you don't want to be supporting us directly, instead you want to support us by spending money on Magic Cards, tcgplayer.com, affiliate link in the description below. You use that link, go to the website. Now you navigate and buy whatever Magic Cards you want, sealed product, uh, singles, whatever you're thinking, and we get a kickback. We would appreciate it. Yeah, go peruse dragonshield.com. They got the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And they sponsor our game sh gameplay series. So if you want to support them and us and yourself, that's a that's a trifactor right there. So go buy the custom sleeves you want or the regular sleeves and boom, everyone's set. I think it's so important that even, we don't say it every single video, those two sponsors or, wow, affiliates, I guess is a better term. Those two affiliates are things that we truly use and believe in. Just because I know that like, yeah, we make money off of them, but besides anything, we just ordered 
20 cards yeah. 10 seconds before this video started off a of TCG player. We used Dragon Shield on every single one of our decks, and that was before. Since 2008. I probably spent, if I had to guess how many boxes of Dragon Shields I bought, it's pr probably like 50 or 60, right? At least. It feels like it's. it might be 75 for me. It's so many boxes. We just You sleeve so many decks. Yeah, I, I just have so many decks, and I play them so often, they get, they, they get wear down eventually. So love those guys. Actually believe in all those products and use them ourselves. Now we got tidbit about our lives. Easy, easy, easy tidbit. Oh, I hope so, because I don't have anything. Yeah, well, you, who do we talk to in a call the other day? Who Who is our new buddy? Oh yeah, we were talking in a call with Lynch from I Hate Your Deck. Really cool dude. I be like really cool dude. Like, awesome, cool dude. Down to earth, chill. All of that good stuff. And on top of all that, he's a man of logic. He started. We, we're, me and BZ are two guys who will talk about logic for hours. Oh, yeah. But he started talking. I don't even remember what the context was, but yeah. he brought up logic. Without us bringing it's like, oh my god, I think I'm in love. <laughs> my eyes bulged out of my head like a cartoon. He was, it was, he's an extremely nice guy. And I will, this is I the first time I said it on the channel. So we're talking to Lynch potentially for a little cross promotion. That'd be awesome if we can get that going. So hopefully that's the thing that we can see in the future. Give you a solid maybe. Solid maybe. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.